So I welcome everybody to the seminar today, uh, which will be given by Thanasis Zemos. So it is in the field of uh, quantum chaos. Uh, you already have uh, the title of the talk. Thanasis is uh, working the last years uh, here at the Research Center for Astronomy on this field. Uh, so much for the introduction. Thanasis, you may come and we start. Uh, so the screen. So. so hello to everyone from me. Uh, we are going to talk as always about Bohmian quantum mechanics. My work with uh, Professor George Kondopoulos in the last years and uh, some work with Christos Ethimiopoulos. Um, our subject is Bohm's rule in the case of three entangled Bohmian qubits. Uh, okay, so. Uh, the last seminar was born, had the title Bones Rule in the case of two entangled Bohmian qubits. And since then, we had uh, published, we published a new paper in Physical uh, Review E uh, with Professor Kondopoulos in the case of three partite systems. So, what's that last one? Okay, so the outline of the talk is also is what about Bohmian trajectories, entanglement, some open questions in open, uh, some open questions in Bohmian quantum mechanics, uh, the way that we deal with qubits, how we construct qubits and coherence through coherent states, the nodal point x point complex mechanism, uh, which is the most general mechanism um, about Bohmian house and it was discovered here in the, our uh, center. Uh, the entanglement of Bohmian qubits, what is Bohm's rule, and order versus chaotic Bohmian trajectories. Just a little bit of everything. So I remind you that the Bohmian trajectories are quantum trajectories, deterministic. And in Bohmian mechanics, we have a theory, of which a quantum theory, which besides the usual Schrodinger equation, um, has also trajectories. The trajectories are uh, guided by the wave function, the usual wave function, the solution of the Schrodinger equation, according to this set of deterministic equations, the so-called Bohmian equations of motion. And regarding house, um, house in Bohmian quantum mechanics uh, has been found that it is uh, produced in the close neighborhood of the nodal points of the wave function, the nodes or nodal points. The nodal points are the, uh, the positions, the position of the nodal points is where the wave function psi becomes zero. Um, so the nodal points play a crucial role in Bohmian mechanics since they are always accompanied in general by hyperbolic points, the so-called X points, which scatter the incoming trajectories and the cumulative action of, such, of many such scattering events is responsible for the generation of house. The nodal points, uh, along with their um, fellows, the X points, uh, form what we say, what we define as a nodal point X point complex. So we want since 2018, we wanted to construct a simple, a toy model, uh, a toy model as a quantum system, where we can find something about the interplay between entanglement and house, uh, and it, it, its impact on the evolution of uh, Bohmian trajectories. What is entanglement? To make a long uh, story short, two or more quantum systems are entangled, if they're joint wave vector in the Hilbert space, their joint uh, quantum state cannot be written as a tensor product of their independent wave vectors. Namely, this equation holds. Um, uh, the, the equation does not hold. Okay. 
it is impossible to measure a property of system A without affecting immediately system B and vice versa, even if A and B may exist in space-like distances. This is the non-locality of quantum mechanics. Uh, entanglement is a manifestation of the non-local nature of quantum mechanics, and it plays a key role in quantum information and quantum computation theory. All of the quantum information protocols and computational schemes are based on the um, purely quantum uh, property of quantum systems, the entanglement. And its existence, uh, its existence is the basic prerequisite for the designation of quantum computing algorithms. So now some open questions in Bohmian quantum mechanics. How can we observe entanglement via Bohmian trajectories? What is the impact of entanglement on Bohmian trajectories? How does entanglement affect ordered and chaotic trajectories? Then we move on to Born's rule. As you may already know, Born's rule is not an axiom in Bohmian quantum mechanics. While in standard quantum mechanics, Born's rule is an axiom and it is introduced as the only choice that gives a time independent conservation of probability. In Bohmian quantum mechanics, we can start with an arbitrary uh, initial distribution of Bohmian particles where P0 is not equal to the absolute uh, value of Psi0 uh, squared. So Born's rule has never been doubted by the experiment. So how can we uh, study these extreme cases where the initial distribution does not um, satisfy Born's rule in the case of Bohmian mechanics? And what is the role of entanglement in the dynamical approximation of Born's rule in Bohmian quantum mechanics? Um, I can say that there are two schools in Bohmian uh, quantum field theory in this discipline. Um, in, qu in quantum theory. The first school says that Born's rule has never been doubted by the experiment because it's the quantum analog of the um, law of large numbers. Uh, it is impossible to observe distributions which do not, uh, Bohm in Bohmian mechanics, Bohmian distributions which do not um, satisfy Born's rule. From our point of view, we believe that Born's rule is nothing uh, else than a quantum uh, dynamical process. If one starts with a uh, distribution that does not satisfy Born's rule, he's going to find that in the long run, Born's rule is going to be accessible to this distribution. Okay, this is the other school. This is the quantum relaxation school in Bohmian quantum mechanics. No, something from uh, quantum information theory. We work with, with qubits. A qubit is the analog of the classical Bit is a quantum analog of the classical bit. <clears throat> so a qubit is a basic unit of quantum information. And any quantum system with two well-defined quantum mechanically separated states can play the role of a qubit. A qubit can be written in the form of this superposition. Okay, C1 uh, ket0 uh, plus C2 ket1, where C1 and C2 are complex numbers and Born's rule um, is, um, dictates that the absolute values squared are going to be, uh, their sum is going to be equal to one. The quantum interference between zero and one is responsible for the different behavior of qubits in comparison with classical bits. Okay, the physical realization of qubits is a very uh, interesting open problem in uh, quantum physics. And there are several candidates of different nature. Now, how do we construct uh, our qubits? We construct uh, them uh, through coherent states. The coherent states are the special states of quantum uh, harmonic oscillator, which are characterized by minimum uncertainty. So the product uh, delta x times delta p becomes uh, minimum. Thus, its behavior resembles closely that of a classical harmonic oscillator. Uh, the coherent states uh, gave them uh, their study, uh, gave the Nobel to Roger Glauber because under some uh, conditions they can describe, they can describe the, um, the physics of the lasers. Mathematically, they are defined as the eigenstates of the annihilation operator 
a hat alpha hat associated to the eigenvalue alpha in this way, where alpha is a complex eigenvalue since the operator a is not Hermitian. This is a uh, mathematical details, uh, some mathematical details, the, the wave function of a coherent state in one dimension in the position representation uh, can be written this way. Okay, so we can pass it quickly. So our Bohmian qubit uh, is described in this way. You can see that if you would take uh, Psi as a superposition between uh, what we call right state and left state, right state is this Gaussian which starts on the right side of the center of the oscillation at t equal to zero. And the left state is this Gaussian. These two Gaussians over the course of time are going to uh, move in the configuration space. But if they are properly engineered, the inner product in the Hilbert space of their two corresponding wave function is closely equal to, uh, to zero. So they are almost with a arbitrary ac accuracy, they can be made uh, to become orthogonal. So they can define the basis states of a qubit. Yes. In, 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 in usual, in standard quantum mechanics, okay. uh, the, the, the most uh, prominent example of a qubit is a spin state. So you have spin up and spin down. These two states are orthogonal. If you take the inner product, it's going to be zero. But this is not the only prerequisite. Two basis states of a qubit have to be accessible the one to another through a unitary transformation. Okay, so you can send a laser pulse or something in order to flip the spin from up to down and vice versa. And here we are working with harmonic oscillators. Generally speaking, the inner product between two coherent states is not equal to zero, but we engineer them. We take them the, um, the amplitudes such in order uh, to this uh, to make this uh, product very close to zero. So some way we can define uh, in this way we can define the qubits. Entanglement now. In the last seminar, I, I show you uh, I showed you the case with two qubits. So we had here R, R. Now we have another one. We added a third qubit, which uh, can be defined. The, the basis states here, the three partite system states are defined as a tensor product, okay? Of the first, the second, and the uh, third qubit correspondingly. So we have R, 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 and L, 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 okay? And I can say, um, I say to you that in the case where C1 is equal to C2, and both of them are equal to uh, one over uh, square root of two, this state, according to the entanglement theory, becomes the so-called GHZ state, which is the maximally entangled three-partite, three-qubit state, okay? The multipartite entanglement uh, has many measures, is not well understood yet. In the last decade, there are many proposals about how we can define, how we uh, make a, um, measures of three-partite entanglement and then of n-partite entanglement. While in the 2D case, there are several measures that are always reliable, in 3D case, this is an open problem. However, okay, uh, we do not have to deal with this problem here. When C1 is equal to C2, we have the maximum entanglement, okay. Sorry. So in the last seminar about two qubits, I showed you that the probability density uh, psi squared absolute uh, value of two qubits is, uh, has this form here. We have two blobs, two Gaussian blobs in 3D space, okay, which are moving in, uh, along, uh, in time. And depending on the value of the, the parameter uh, C 
two, which can be the entanglement parameter because C1 is always connected through Born's rule with C2. So you can change C2 from one, from zero up to uh, one over square root of two. The two blobs move in the same way, but they do not have the same form. One of them becomes larger or uh, smaller. Okay. In the case of the product state where C2 is equal to zero, then we have only this uh, part of the wave function. There is no entanglement. It is a product state, okay? Because it can be written separately through the tensor product of these states. Then we have only one blob. And this one blob, its motion is a Lissajou figure, is a Lissajou curve in the configuration space. When we have two of them, um, in the extreme case of maximal entanglement, the two blobs are equal. They are the same and they move in the configuration space. Now, the movement, the equation for the movement, you haven't shown this equation, how they move the surface. Psi, the, psi, psi squared, psi squared uh, has, has, from, from here, yes, it, it has, you have dependence, uh, time dependence. So if you form, this uh, wave function, this superposition. And where does the dependence come from? Where does the equation for that? For that? The, the, uh, the wave function. Yeah, where does this come from? Is the potential somewhere? Yes, it is the potential of the quantum, of the quantum harmonic oscillator. This is a certain class. This quantum is, harmonic. yes, the simple one with no interaction in terms. Okay, but Schrodinger back in 1926, um, he was the first who found that this, um, this choice of wave function, this solution of, of uh, wave function has minimum uncertainty. Okay, so if you see, uh, excuse me. So if you see the motion of the two blobs, it's actually a Lissajou figure and nothing more. So it resembles very closely to a, a classical uh, harmonic oscillator. Now in the probability, the probability density in the case of three qubits, so we have a larger dimension, okay? We have to make contour, something like contour plots, okay? So we have here these balls. First, they start from um, there uh, at, at t equals zero, they are yellow, and then it move, move in space and they form the 4D analog of the um, Lissajou figure. So it's much more complicated, but I just want to show it. Here, in our case, in the two DK, in the, um, the two qubit case, we have found with Professor Kondopoulos analytically the position of the infinitely many nodal points. And Professor found also uh, what is going on in the case of three qubits. So in this case, you see that we have also uh, a dependence on Z the third dimension, actually, the, this is the third qubit. So why in the, while in the 2D case, we have infinitely many uh, nodal points along a straight line, now this straight line becomes a grid, a moving grid of nodal points where we can define that in the vertical direction, we can say that these are the nodal lines, okay? So, excuse me, these are, the, this um, lattices of nodal points in one direction are what we found in the two qubit case. Now we have a third case, so we have a much more complicated figure. So everyone from these nodal points is always accompanied by an X point. So imagine that this sheet of uh, nodal point X point complexes moves in time and in 3D space and the incoming trajectories are, get scattered from it. Okay, it has a very complicated motion. Here I, I show you uh, the nodal point X point complex, the standard figure, just in order to, to understand what is going on. Every one from these little balls is the center, the end, the nodal point. And in the frame of reference of this moving nodal point, there is always a second stagnant point of the Bohmian flow of the Bohmian flow, the X point. So it is proven, 
it is a hyperbolic uh, unstable point which scatters the incoming trajectories in this way or in this way and some of them very few of them they can enter this little channel and go very close to the nodal point so we see nodal vortices the bohemian vortices for some times and then they um, escape from this structure in the state in the product states of two qubits what we see here is that the bohemian trajectories are nothing more than 2d uh, lisa zoo figures okay typical behavior this behavior is passed uh, intact in the three qubit case so in this case we have for product states as r o times r o times r we have three qubits so we have a 3d lisa zoo curve however when entanglement enters we have temporary lisa zoo curves in the case of two qubits so what we have is a lisa zoo figure for some time and then the nodal point um, affects the, the incoming trajectory scatters it in a complicated way and then for up to uh, in, for the um, time window between this and the next scattering event we have a second lisa zoo figure and a third lisa zoo figure and all of these temporary lisa zoo figures they cover uh, the uh, the support of the wave function the support of the wave function is the region of the configuration space where psi squared is not negligible okay so we have a remarkable uh, probability to find the particle there so here you see the temporary uh, lesser zoo curves of two qubits and now you see the temporary lesser zoo curves in three qubits we have the same behavior so you see that we have a cube which um, for, for, uh, where the bohemian trajectory is confined for some time and then we have a chaotic scattering and then this bohemian trajectory is uh, confined in another cube and so on and so forth so now this is uh, Max Born and this is David Bohm. So Born's rule in Bohmian quantum mechanics. This model, the qubit model, due to the infinitely many nodal points, has a very characteristic um, future. Okay, uh, it has ergodic chaotic trajectories. We have found that in the two qubit case. Uh, always, uh, as already shown in the last seminar, every chaotic trajectory has the same long limit distribution of points. Okay, that's why we called it ergodic. This is not the case in Bohmian trajectories. If you take uh, an arbitrary system, you won't find that the chaotic trajectories are ergodic because there are se several. Uh, parts in the configuration space which are forbidden for them so uh, as in the case of two qubits which is shown here we found that no matter from uh, where is our uh, initial condition we are going to find the same final distribution which is always if you make a scale the same final distribution with bones rule in the three uh, in the three um, dimensions, we found also that this behavior is passed intact. So this is not a very uh, easy um, graph to make, but you can see I tried to make it as, as, as good as possible in order to find to see the, the 3D structure of the distribution. So what you see here is, a is the long limit distribution of a chaotic trajectory of a single chaotic trajectory. And what you see here is a long limit distribution of a sample of a collective distribution following Born's rule. And what you see is that they look uh, uh, very similar. Okay. So as in the two qubit case and in the three qubit case, the entanglement, the, the, the highly entangled states and obviously the, uh, the maximal entangled state, wherever you start your Bohmian particle or your initial distribution of Bohmian particles, you are always going to end uh, up to the Born's rule, 
to the bone room. We made very uh, technical calculations between uh, the, um, the underlying matrices which produce these distributions, both in two and in three decays, and found that they always, after very long time, the Frobenius norm, which is the P2 norm, which is the distance between the matrices which produce the distributions, the, this distance is always going uh, to tend to zero as T goes to infinity. So mathematically speaking, and practically speaking, the trajectory is both, uh, the chaotic trajectory is both in two qubits and in three qubits, they are always ergodic. But the ergodic behavior is going to be seen after very large times in the 3D case, because you want to see house. Ergodicity become, is, a, is a result of house, okay? But in the three dimensions, you have to find the trajectories in, certain, um, in a certain region and space from three dimensions. One in two dimensions, you have least azure figures, and sometimes you have uh, the, the collisions close to the, um, the center of the configuration space. This center of the configuration space is less times accessible for a given time t in th to the three uh, d trajectories. So you have to wait for larger and larger times. But at the end of the day, convergence to bonds rule um, is going to be found uh, for every entangled state. And our final result, which is the most important from anything you see uh, up, here, up to here, is that if you take the bones rule distribution, the bones rule distribution in two qubits, which is the red line, the red curve, and the bones rule distribution in three qubits, which is the blue curve, you see that for every non-zero value of the entanglement parameter, C2, the 3D case has always higher um, proportions of chaotic trajectories. This means that as we uh, add several qubits, three qubits, four qubits, five qubits, you can make the conjecture. Uh, this, these figures uh, make us to make a reasonable conjecture that for multipartite systems, Bones rule is going to be accessible by any initial distribution. Any initial distribution. Why? Because Bones rule is going to be dominated by chaotic and ergodic trajectories. And this is something that it has not been found quantitatively in Bohm and quantum mechanics. This is a very special model, but it encompasses all the complexity of Bohm and mechanics, it encompasses all the different amounts of entanglement, it is a, uh, it's a very good example. Conclusion. In the 3D case, there is a remarkable increase of the chaotic ergodic trajectories for every non-zero entanglement in comparison with the two qubit case. This is due to the existence of significantly more nodal point x point complexes that, uh, than in the 2D case. Here we have nodal sheets, okay, 3D nodal sheets moving in space. Our main conclusion is that by increasing the dimensionality of the system, the number of nodal point x point complexes grows up. And so does the number of chaotic trajectories. It is natural to expect that this behavior will become even more evident if we add further qubits, as I, saw, as I told you before. So we have more degrees of freedom. This is a nightmare from a technical point of view. If you want to study Bohmian trajectories in four or five dimensions, then you have no tools of visualizing this, um, this behavior. It's going to be very, very, very difficult. Okay. Uh, actually, this is the first, I believe that this is the only work in three dimensions of Bohmian mechanics, a quantitative uh, study. Okay. As a consequence, Born rule, the Born rule will be reachable after very long times for the majority of initial preparations in multi qubit systems. Um, this uh, work was published 
in 2021 uh, with Professor Kondopoulos, ergodicity and bones rule in entangled three qubit Bohmian system in the same journal where we had an entangled two qubit Bohmian system. Physical review E. Um, and we hope that we can extend our studies in the future in more realistic systems. Uh, this is a toy model, okay? But if we, if one tries to, to deal with a realistic system, I don't know if he can make the, the calculations. Here we had the opportunity to work with infinitely many nodal points, which whose position can be found analytically. This is the exception. The nodal points are always found numerically. And sometimes in order to follow their motion, you have to work with 60 significant digits. So every computer breaks down. Okay. Thank you. Seems. Χρόνια πολλά. Βρήκα μια ωραία φράση. Αυτά τα λέμε στα ελληνικά. Δεν ξέρω να τα πω στα αγγλικά. Είναι για τι δύσκολε στιγμέ. So uh, there is time for questions. Uh, if, uh, if, uh, if you want to, to ask something, let's, uh, let's ask first uh, the audience here. Hmm. And cosmic and chaotic are not the same thing. You can have a, a chaotic motion mm -hmm. in a limited part of phase space. Mm -hmm. So it's not chaotic dash mm -hmm. ergodic. No, here it's chaotic it dash ergodic. Ergodic means you start from one position and you flip all of space. Yes. It's Correct. not the same thing. It's not the same. It's not the same. So when you have an ideal gas in a room, it is the same. It is actually the same. You break a bottle with a gas, but here in bone quantum mechanics, all the um, deviations from bone rule become through the um, uh, the order trajectories. So the dark role is not. Uh, the order trajectories play the dark role in bone rule and not the chaotic. Actually, the chaotic help us to reach bone rule because the scattering events. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And another, yeah. another question, which is more general than what you show here. Is, is there a way to calculate times in the sense you need some time to build the, the pattern uh, yeah. in an experiment, like a double slit experiment or even this experiment here? So you need the time to start seeing a certain distribution. You know the solution, but you will yeah. build it. Yes. Is there a way to calculate these times? The, the times of uh, the, the appearance of ergodicity? Uh, the times of appearance of a certain quantum pattern, in the sense that you, you, you detect you detect the particle particles that you start building. The e experimentally, I don't have uh, I don't have an answer. Here we are doing the mathematical work, and uh, we are trying to reach as far uh, as large times as we can observe through the American simulation. But here, in you know, the 3D case, these times were much larger than the 2D case. Much larger, much larger. Because, for example, uh, we have discussed this in the double slit experiment. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been experiments where you see the, the interference pattern photon by photon by photon by photon. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, you have, let's say, 10 photons. And you don't know what you're seeing, but mm -hmm. then you have 100 photons, 1,000 photons, 12,000 photons, and then you gradually build the Mm. The final solution. There's a way to quantify how close you are to the final solution. Mm -hmm. This is what I mean. If you have such, such experience, no, here we are. Find how you slowly build the solution, how you close you are to the final solution. So this gives you a time scale, and you have time scale in your body. Okay. Uh, here we are very, uh, very uh, these are the very, very steps, very first steps of the theory. Okay. Uh, let me ask you also something. Uh, you said that from 2D to 3D, you mm -hmm. observe that the number of chaotic trajectories increase. In Bond's rule. In Bond's rule. Bond's rule. Is it just the number that increases, or also you can quant qualitatively speak about the, the degree of chaos that uh, in the 3D. Uh, ah, ah, ah. Uh, the strength of chaos. 
Uh, yeah, well, I mean that uh, in classical systems you can measure it with the Yapun of Expon. Yes. Or something. Here we we didn't focus on the the strength of the of the on the number on the value of the Yapun of exponent. We tried to see only the um, the behavior the um, the difference between the behavior of uh, between one chaotic trajectory and multiple chaotic trajectories inside Bonzul. We don't have hard um, we didn't make a cartography of the regions according to the Yapun of exponent. Not, not the regions, but uh, exactly this you can see because uh, since you say that the number of trajectories is bigger, then you have more chaotic trajectories in the 3D case. Yes. But uh, what would be interesting to know mm -hmm. is uh, if this uh, new, the, the additional, let's say, chaotic trajectories bring more chaos in the system. Correct. This is an open problem, and this is linked with the with our first uh, question. Excuse me. This is an idea about. Uh, so, how entanglement is related to chaos. Mm -hmm. So, not only this is this is an open question, and in two. In the case of two qubits, and it has to, be, it has, has, we must first answer it in the case of two qubits. So, the bigger the entanglement in two qubits, the larger the degree of chaos. We don't have an answer. In three D case, we have larger number of chaotic trajectories, and with what degree of chaos? We don't have an answer yet. Yes. So, anyone else from the audience? If not, uh, let's see here. If uh, is someone, uh, Christo, you want to ask something? Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hello. 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 Good morning to everyone. Uh, well, actually, it's related to the previous questions. One question and one remark. I start with the question Can you show up again this plot of D going down as T increases? So, uh, no, this? What, yeah, exactly. What we see there, in my opinion, is a kind of power law, probably. I mean, I see that uh, D went down by one order of magnitude while uh, the time, uh, re or, let's say, increased by two orders of magnitude. So you have something like a, a law. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if you ever tried to explain that. I recall that Valentini with some people were trying to figure out some quantification of those times mm -hmm. I was asked before in terms of Lyapunov exponents. So oh, the yeah. basic idea is that the largest, mm -hmm. the shortest the Lyapunov time, the largest the Lyapunov exponent, the shortest should be the relaxation time scale. I don't know if you've ever tried to compute the Yapun of exponents in this. Moment. No, no, no. Here in this in this series of works, uh, no, we didn't try to to link the entanglement with the Yapun of exponents. We only found uh, the number. We tried to calculate the proportions of chaotic trajectories inside uh, Born's rule because the simulation time here is not very. Uh, yeah, they, they are very long. They are very long. Okay. And the comment has to do with what Yanis, I believe, was saying before and makes me recall a conversation that I had many years ago with actually with Liz Molin at the Conference on Foundations, which is not about the law of the big numbers, but mm -hmm. about the law of the small numbers. Uh -huh. So essentially what happens is that when you build those histograms, mm -hmm. Uh, you never get the ideal distribution. You just get delta n, the number of visits in a cell. And this number will differ from psi square by a certain amount, by a certain fluctuation. And this fluctuation is huge when the number of, of measurements, let's say, of this quantity is small, and it will become way larger when you have more data including much smaller, let's say, the fluctuation when you have more data included in the, in the histogram. So the question is, 
could Bohmian mechanics tell us something more with respect to classical, let's say, orthodox quantum mechanics as per the building up of those distributions? How we tend, not what is the final outcome, which is that this number would tend to zero, but how are those fluctuations coming to be built up gradually over time? I don't know if you, if you can comment anything on that. With people. Yeah. Uh, Christos, this was exactly precisely my question. And this difference is quantifiable by a quantity called the coefficient of determination. Mm -hmm. This is what quantifies the difference of the histogram, histogram from psi square. And there have been experiments like this, and you can compare them with your theory how fast you build the quantum pattern from your theory or from Bohmian mechanics. And you can compare that to, to an actual, actual experiment that have been performed. Yeah, that's very interesting because actually uh, Bohmian mechanics gives you an answer on that because the trajectories are deterministic. So essentially, if you know those fluctuations at the beginning of the simulation and you just exactly. trace the trajectories, you should be able to predict this building up all along meaning yes 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 yeah okay mm -hmm. so uh anyone else who wants to ask something i don't see any hand raised okay if not uh we thank uh Hannes again <laughs>